just to end this, I don't want to continue on too long. I've already wasted a bit more of your time. It looks like there's been a, there's a bit of a beef brewing within the DJing community as per usual. It seems like this year has been the year for the DJ beefs, right? Whether it's people, whether it's customers or punters, um, you know, calling out DJs for playing Plague Graves, other DJs calling out other DJs for playing Plague Graves, people for doing ghost productions, loads of other nonsense happening in the scene. But it feels like in a year where everyone's had their booking and earning potential drastically um, slashed due to COVID, everyone's sort of like picking and throwing stones at their fellow colleagues and peers, some of which are doing maybe slightly better than they are in an act of maybe diverting attention away from their pain and their hole and their heart and generally just for a bit of fun in it because I think most people especially when they're bored especially when they've got money in the bank and they don't really have any obligations they just sit around their home and just think you know what let me pick a fight cause a bit of drama get my blood pressure running and get a bit of fun in my life and this is exactly what someone like Daniel Wang did today he decided for some unbeknownst reason I don't know why he decided to use this as a time to air out his dirty laundry with Peggy Goo but he decided to make a complete he decided to write this essay story time thing on his facebook detailing a very traumatic experience he had with peggy goo also known as suge knight right um the way he describes peggy goo in this account of the running he's had with her over the years he honestly makes her sound like an absolute dragon right like um cersei in flipping game of thrones now don't get me wrong Am I Peggy Goo's biggest fan? Probably not, as a person, right? Musically wise, I think she's got some great productions. It's probably up in the air if not she, if she actually does them herself, especially when you read some of the comments that people have been putting out there. But regardless, she seems like a girl who has essentially gamed the system to some level, especially if you read her backstory about having rich parents that afforded her luxury to essentially intern in Berlin for, what, five years or so and work on her artistic practice, which then led to, you know, her becoming the representative, the, the new female representation that they seem to have in the scene every three or four years um the big labels and agencies and all these people seem to pick somebody out of the aretha and prop them up as a sort of token representation for the scene overall that is grossly misrepresenting um different backgrounds color creeds and genders anywhere as it is so again most of that stuff isn't really her fault it's not a fault of having rich it's not a fault she had connections it's not a fault the industry picked her to be the next global big star in djing all those things aren't her fault but i guess it does go there is some fault to be laid at her feet for being somebody that generally a lot of people don't have a lot of good things to say about personally as a human people don't really skip a moment to shit on her to kind of kick her on your head you know to kind of say some snide things and whatever it may be and usually from my experience from looking from the outside in with these people right there's usually always truth to it now it doesn't always mean everything everyone's saying is right but if everybody is going out of their way to shit on you and to you know not go out of their way to defend you when you're being harassed online um when you're being spoken about you know in a negative fashion when the facts of the story are being purposely misconstrued to make you look bad when no one's stepping out and saying, hey, I vouch for this person, they're my friend, blah, 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 blah. There's usually a reason behind it. It's usually because, guess what? You're a shitty person behind the scenes. And that's what basically has happened. Now, the story time with Daniel Wang it seems like it's information that we don't need to know because I think most discerning fans of dance music were not surprised to learn that Peggy Goo might be a bit of an entitled C-U-N-T right well you'll kind of guess that it is what it is but there's also something to be said for most djs at her level at her level of fame and notoriety are c-u-n-t's most of them and we've basically seen them illustrate this over the last few years right from dj beef drama to lockdown raves to plague raves to ghost producers to mean comments online we see various accounts and you know djs complaining about plain um connections and not being able to get business car seats we've seen djs really go out of their way to show us how disconnected they are from regular life how sheltered they are how pampered and entitled their experience are is living you know on airplanes and playing in front of thousands of people and getting paid you know obscene amounts of money to go play most djs are up there and ask most people DJs are entitled so this story really doesn't make any sense to share it with us but regardless we're going to read through it and pick out some of the more eloquent 
Hello World Bits. And of course, leave a comment on the other side. Now, of course, with, with myself, this is the post as well with Daniel Wang. I actually was made um, aware of Daniel Wang a few years ago. And he was actually the person who put me onto Cocktail de Amour, the legendary club night at the formerly, at the now gone R um, Grease Mueller, right? The original one, RIP. He read this article for Electronic Beats back in the day. I think it might have been 2015 called DJ and journalist sorry or no DJ journalist Danny Wang explains the appeal of a wild cocktail de more party it's a really really great essay right he details essentially the entire history of cocktail de more uh, the people behind it some of the legends that kind of played at it the vibe the ethos loads of really cool things that he kind of explained in this really detailed amazing essay that essentially got me to go to Greece Mula the first time maybe what 2015 late 2015 maybe winter December around that time Time. so i've actually got a big um space in my heart for daniel wang himself right and he also was responsible for producing the track um uh if you're looking for some action why not pay me for this i don't know what that song is from like 11 years ago um i think it's called like some dream like some dream something like that right it's like a really great disco track so again somebody that i kind of really rate as a dj and obviously somebody i really rate in terms of how they kind of navigate the scene and their perspective and stuff just in general you look a cool dude so to see him essentially go on this weird tirade against peggy goo essentially arguing about really expensive furniture really kind of bummed me out man because I, I like daniel wang and this is, seems like a really cucky thing to do but again let's read it so Danny Wang says the following this strange year is coming to an end it's on Facebook I'll link it in the show notes if you guys read it yourself this year is coming to an end and two uh, and the two best things happening in 2019 are Donald Trump or 2020 Donald Trump is getting voted out of the White House and Peggy Key moved out of my building now he started off his statement his story time comparing Donald Trump to Peggy Goo now Peggy Goo might be a lot of things entitled spoiled average dj sinister social climber more of an influence than a dj blah 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 let's all label people right but is she donald trump because she gets paid a lot of money to dj for nike at a boiler room party somewhere is she donald trump because she might have maybe got fast forward her dj career quicker than maybe that she has skill level maybe her would assume is she a is she donald trump because she comes from a privileged family like really donald trump this man is insane, bro. He's smoking mad stuff. And he says, no, this is not a joke. He says, I'm finally going public and not on a DJ page for only 50 people to read, which I don't know what he's trying to say there. Um, maybe other people read, I don't know, whatever. Let's continue. I've written this on my computer over and over and in my head for two to three years more. And I need to do this for my own mental health. Sorry, but I need to say this at last. Now, at this moment, I generally was scanning through the text, hoping to find some really crazy thing that Peggy Goo did I don't know she slit his cat throat she left the flipping head of a moose on his bed she stabbed him in the eye um she ran off with you know 50 grand or something I don't know I was, I was looking for some really heavy shit because when you start off your you know story time with this is something I've been wanting to write over and over on my computer for two to three years something you've been holding on to pain and suffering i'm really expecting some heavy hitting shit now when we continue it you'll be like oh my god this man's insane it continues like a poor dolphin with a mental with a metal spike stuck in his fin i've been traumatized by knowing this awful human being she was my again I, I don't know if this is a troll or if this is like an in joke between the both of them and they're just kind of trolling all of us in public because this is maddening she was my neighbor and she moved out three months ago some parts of the world think she's a talented attractive fashionable dj okay this is the biggest saddest marketing scam ever like every other person right every everyone has a marketing scam in order to prop up their career if you're trying to make it in the arts just on your talent alone let me just tell you this now you're gonna fail you need a marketing scam you need a crux you need something to lean on you need an avatar you need something to in order to differentiate you from everyone else that exists out there especially in the djing world anyone and their mum can dj anyone can mix two records together it's not difficult to do in order to separate yourself you need a marketing scam and most djs on these top 100 lists have exquisite marketing scams 
right? Whether it's a story about them working at some legendary record store, whether it's a story about them uh, being a PA, whether it's a story about them being a festival kid, everyone's got these fantasy stories that they kind of make up in their heads or with their marketing teams or with their managers in order to basically propagate and prop up this message or this idea of what they are when it's not really them. Everyone does this. This is not new. Like, relax. Um, lots of us in Berlin know the truth but not one had the guts or the authority to speak up like oh my god who is she bruv it's Peggy Goo it's not fucking Ostergott right it's not like, it's relax <laughs> they're afraid people will call them racist sexist and bitter or jealous now that might be true uh, but again this is nonsense I finally found the courage to say this today and lord knows I'm having nothing against Asians <laughs> nor do I have anything against women okay we'd hope not because you are Asian yourself isn't he I'm sure I haven't have nothing against uh, I have nothing to be bitter about because I have 20 years of joyful DJ career behind me already that I think is a lie I think if you're going to call somebody out because again we'll have to kind of own our shit because I think a lot of people on social are getting a bit oh he, she, he's being what's that what is someone saying he's um He's um he's opening the gates to of to misogynistic abuse. That's not his problem. If he has a personal uh experience with Peggy Goo and it's bad, he's allowed to speak about it openly. We're allowed to mock him for crying about a, a, a chair online, right? And not just sending an email or a message uh, privately, but he's allowed to talk about his experience. Now. <laughs> the fact that he's saying nothing to bitter about is a lie because if you have something if you're gonna call somebody out publicly you're definitely bitter in some way in shape or form it just is what it is like just own your shit like just because you've had a 20 year dj and create doesn't mean you can't be jealous of somebody that's been in the industry for 10 you can be jealous of her like it, it, it's gonna be a thing and, you, and you're allowed to be jealous of her too because she might have some bits of success that you might want to have now what you do with that jealousy is something different right of course you know but jealousy is a normal emotion that's not a bad thing now he's trying to make it seem as if like he's coming from this high and mighty place like come on daniel wang and this is not about musical taste or talent yes it is you can play the most stupid grunge rock or the techno trance and you can be a chopping and you can be a chopping genius but whatever it is if you don't do it if you do it for fun and friendship then i'd never have any fault to find of it lies he says it's the most bizarre coincidence in the world that peggy Goo and daniel wang lived for three and a half years separate why are you talking about, talk, talk about a third person separate by one floor before or after she became very famous i truly wish i never got stuck in a situation it's time to tell the truth again he's not he's, not, he's still rambling it's time to tell the truth while the land while well, the landlord is still renovating the apartment which she left he was in a rage when he found what condition she left it in okay cool she's a shitty neighbor what's new the truth is peggy goo he puts her real name there i can't pronounce that i uh, can min jin kim i guess is one of the most crude tacky greedy narcissistic abusive troubling persons i've ever met in my whole life now dan yang be honest with me is she the only dj you've met that kind of you know could be ascribed those terms really come on brother i mean 100 percent. see everyone in berlin knew that we were neighbors so they told me everything about every encounter with her i've been burdened with the every anecdote since 2017 imagine 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 being daniel wang and the thing that burdens you is not the 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 you know the rising price the rising uh cost of rent in berlin the global pandemic that's crippling your entire country the prospect of not being able to dj again for the rest of your life whatever else going on in the world imagine your biggest worry in your head is the fact that people have told you mean stories about peggy goo or bad experience they've had with her imagine he said, I don't even know how to begin. I tried my best and nice to be nice to her at first, ignoring the expensive outfits, the layers of makeup, and the overpowering perfume. Some people have mentioned histo histo what? histrionic personality disorder. I cannot make a proper diagnostic, but I see a connection. I installed all of her bookshelves and shoe shelves. Again, you're the cuck. If she, if she stinks and she wears too much makeup, but she gets you to install all of her shelves, she's won, isn't it, really? 600 pairs of shoes did you put them all on the shelf as well again cuck hung on her lamps cuck i even had her keys and received packages for her cuck which which ended in her viciously screaming at me because i had left a huge louis vuitton bag in the hallway while she was in bali ignoring messages yeah why would you do that why would you have a louis vuitton bag in the hallway while she got to bali put it in your room cuck we were two asian immigrants in the same building who we could not try to make a connection <laughs> maybe she just didn't like you in it i don't know <laughs> but i always felt that something was wrong 
I'm trembling and I want to vomit as I finally write this on my Samsung phone. This guy is a flipping weapon. I can make a timeline of all the incidents, but she and I stopped talking about two years ago, right before a big record release. Yeah, she got famous. She started feeling herself and she went on to, she went, she got, got, went and got new friends. It's a story old as time. And uh, that's when everyone started telling me her, their stories too. She says, you see, the guy who put on her first record is an old friend of mine gossipy and he also is a regular dj at bergheim she started bad mouthing him in the interview he says he could tell me who really produced these releases i haven't verified that again i don't think it's anyone's business this whole ghost producing thing is annoying um everyone receives help in some way shape or form unless you're a genius producer making music is difficult if she's able to do it with people's help it is what it is but these kind of um behind the scenes sort of stuff should stay behind the scenes you should be kind of gossiping about it in public to everybody that's really out of order um his wife um had been he says continues that his wife had also been a friend been her friend and lent her two quite expensive eames chairs peggy then refused to return them claiming that she told that she to show them by accident she's a gangster isn't it she's an absolute gangster right she doesn't make her own music she's a pretty mediocre dj she wears too much makeup puts too much perfume on and then jacks people's chairs and sells them on eBay. That's a G, right? That's an absolute G. <laughs> but she's rich. She doesn't need to sell anything, doesn't she? I've heard skeptics say, hmm, kleptocracy doesn't follow that logic. So why are they trying to insinuate that she's actually broke and she needs the money? Even, even more gangster. Continuing, most telling of all, Peggy tried working for a while at a record shop for an, another friend of whom we all know. This is the best part of it, and I don't want to name names, but I can think of, uh, but I can think of it if I have to. And I can if I have to. The owner came to me puzzled and angry. He said, "Do you know her? She refused to sort the records or help the customers. Instead, she would come wearing designer outfits, take pictures of herself among the record bids to upload to her Instagram." Bruv, Peggy Goo is an absolute G she did right what i guess most kids would probably want to do when they get an internship working at a record store no one wants to sort through records uh record sleeves label up stuff scan stuff into the system organize into the shelf merchandise it well what they actually want is to add that story as part of their law and get this assumption that hey i worked at phonica records no you didn't no, you didn't. You might have helped him out for the Saturday evening when they were having a sale, but that was it. And he didn't really help either. You just stood around and tried to look cute and pretty so you could add it as part of your story. And she achieved it. She did it. And again, who's the record store owner who's coming to Daniel James to complain about his staff not working in the store? Why don't you go to her and tell her to pull up a, you know, uh, pull a roll her sleeves up or get out? Like, this scene is full of some absolute words. It continues and when the shop owner said that she should do the work her reply was but that would get my clothes dirty <laughs> but there's more at the end of the day the rare vinyl gems which other employees had dug out would go missing peggy had taken them bought them or put them in her own bag gangster absolute gangster every few weeks of the months that come more news peggy likes to say that she was the first korean to rock Berghain. i bumped into the booker there after her gig and he said to me with a wry incredulous laugh peggy Goo was nothing like what we had expected we were certainly never booking her again and that was that so everyone this is like a common thing people speak about this supposed gig she had at Berghain where she flopped and she wasn't that good look it happens it's the biggest stage in the world it's essentially the olympics of djing right it's a platform that most you know flipping what didn't um richie horton get chucked out of Bergheim for being too larry in there and getting too excited right um residents have been banned from playing there and then being reintroduced it's a place that will probably bring out the worst and the best in most people when they go and play she had a bad gig it happens what can you do? The amount of other DJs I've seen, high profile ones who kind of talk about the art and the art of selecting all this nonsense, who have played absolute dog shit, you know, um, sets in places I've been at, which I haven't really spoken about in open or, you know, people haven't had the luxury of being able to care about saying comments on their on their Instagram is numerous. So this is nothing to hold her, hold against her. Do you know what I mean? Like, okay, she she played shit one time. Well, what can you do? Shit happens. He says, I come home late on the Saturday night 
and I saw a tiny young Korean woman dragging a massive load of IKEA boxes down the street. I mean, it was a kind of weight that only a tiny woman shouldn't be carrying alone. I felt horrible for her and I offered to help. Then I realized what was going on. Don't help me, it's okay, she said. At that moment, Peggy walked past us the, size, the stairway <laughs> carrying a light Gucci bag. Then right before 10 p.m., they started hammering the new shelves together. I saw at least three different women help her over just a few months. <laughs> yeah what can we say in it like she's a g she's got loads of friends that want to be her friend hang out so if you're going to be pay a good friend you're going to have to help her out with ikea luggage you're going to have to you know drag it upstairs in, in berlin apartments which are notoriously which are notorious for not having lifts and you're gonna to have to put it together in a dead at night it is what it is <laughs> then one day the old man from the seventh floor who loves the rolling stones came over to arena rage he said daniel are you her friend peggy was insulting and swearing at me she has a door open and slammed it in our face <laughs> i said in germany when you see your neighbors coming you hold the doors open for them again she's a bit of a bitch but again who cares oh and i got to know the head of the former promotion team he's a sweet german man he said to me the whole team basically walked out on her he had never met somebody so greedy he said who tells lies at every turn who would do anything for money or publicity in fact he said you know this is really grim but the, it felt like exactly like working for donald trump what how do he didn't know that um lying stealing every, anything from attention or money to add to all this peggy Goose, former agent was apparently so badly abused and harassed by peggy he had to go he had to undergo <laughs> she had to undergo psychotherapy i fully understand why man this is an overreaction to the extreme and again it continues here mostly loads of um peggy Goose slander and it's just all an absolute nonsense like this could have been kept in the i messages this could have been kept to email this could have been kept to texts dms on instagram or voice notes why do we know this information why do we care honestly she sounds like a bitch okay cool so does every other dj every other one um that's the only bit that i kind of agree with in terms of like why was this necessary and again so disappointing it coming from a daniel wang because he comes across as a pretty decent guy in some of the interviews i've seen of him online especially on youtube doing you know b-size and crate digging stuff and of course i mentioned that cocktail de more article which i recommend you definitely check out I'll put the link in the show notes for you guys to read it yourself but he does come across like a good dude and this is just so unnecessary but again it goes to show that maybe this is one of the um odd consequences of people not having gigs guys and girls are pointing fingers at others who are maybe a little bit more successful than them at this current time and they're just using the opportunity to tear each other down for what really who is this serving if people did know that peggy was a piece of shit is this going to change anyone's mind probably not and for her fans who love her regardless are they going to believe what he says probably not because he sounds like an absolute bitch in that flipping text absolute bitch and she sounds like every other teacher i've heard um sh people share stories of online um but yeah maddening things happening on the dms and on the on the socials with these djs out here man they're just going absolutely nuts but you know it is what it is i guess 